أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما تفعلوا من خير يعلمه الله وقال تعالى وما تفعلوا من خير فإن الله به عليم وقال تعالى وما تقدموا لأنفسكم من خير تجدوه عند الله هو خيرا وأعظم أجرا واستغفر الله إن الله كان غفورا رحيما صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته My dear respected brothers and elders mothers and sisters we always begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created you and I the one who has created everything we see and that which we do not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has granted us many favorable bounties. We praise Him and we seek His forgiveness. We also send abundant salutations upon our beloved Nabi Kari Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned that when a person sends salutations upon Nabi Muhammad alayhi wa salatu wa sallam, Sallu biha ashra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in return sends ten times his salutations upon Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear respected brothers and elders, today I will be speaking about a very important topic. A topic that relates to the purpose of our existence and how as the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how we can all attain what we call success. And we speak about success all the time. We speak about, you know, being a successful person. But being a Muslim, what is real success? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines success in the Quran. And wallahi, there is no other better definition. Allah ta'ala says, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدَخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ A person who is saved from the fire of Jahannam, and he enters paradise, he is successful. This is a successful person. I would like to take you back to one of the great ulama of the past, a shaqiq al-Balhi, one of the ulama of the Tabi'i, and you might have heard this conversation, but I would like to mention one portion of this conversation, and then from there elaborate on my topic. One of the famous students of Shaqiq al-Balhi, his name was Hatim al-Asam, a very famous alim from the Tabi'een. And for those who don't know who are the Tabi'een, the Tabi'een are those who had Iman, faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they lived in the time of the Sahaba and they died with Iman. This is the definition of a Tabi'een. So someone who actually saw the Sahaba and had Iman, so one of, he studied under his respected teacher for over 33 years. And the first thing he learned from his sheikh, being in his suhbah for 33 years, he explains, and he mentioned eight things, but I only want to mention one point, and that's the first thing he learned from his ustad, being a student of his for 33 years. 
So what did Hatim al-Asam say? He says, Inni nadaltu ila al-khalq. When I pondered over my community, because he was a great imam and he had a very great following, he says, وَوَجَدْتُ أَنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنْهُمْ يُحِبُّ مَحْبُوبٌ He says, I found many people were connected to their beloved things. Of course, it's only natural. You love your family, you love your parents, you have a car. If someone scratches it, it's like it scratches the heart. Huh? If someone breaks into your house, it hurts. It really hurts. You know, subhanAllah, because that's your personal belongings. So he says, I found my community, they were very attached to these beloved things. But he says, the same person who was so attached to these tangible objects, whether it be his family, whether it be his bank account, whether it be his vehicle, whether it be his dwelling, he says, that same person, فَإِذَا ذَهَبَ إِلَى الْقَبْرِ when he goes to the graveyard, ذهب, he goes, وَتَرَكَ مَحْبُوبُ And all those beloved things are left behind. And this is the reality of life. We all have to accept this. That all those beloved things, we are going to have to leave it behind. He says, وَنَذَرْتُ إِلَىٰ قَوْلِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ I then reflected over one of the traditions the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he states يَتْبَعُ الْمَيِّتَ ثَلَاثَ Three things follow a person to the Qabr. A person's family. أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَعَمَلُهُ A person's family is well and good and bad deeds. فَيَرْجِعُ إِثْنَيْنِ Two things return back. When we are washed, when we pass away, when Malakul Maud comes and removes our ruh, and the unseen becomes apparent, Akhirah begins, and people wash our bodies, and then they shroud us with white cloth, and then Janazah Salah is made on our bodies, and then we are taken to the graveyard on the shoulders of men, placed into the vehicle, and then taken to the cover to the graveyard. And all of us have seen this process. We have all seen this process where we wash the body, Salatul Janazah is prayed on the body, and then the body is taken to the mortuary, to the cemetery. We all have seen this. So that is a living testimony that we all have experienced, and we see every day that something is happening. Just today we received a message that someone has passed away. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. May Allah reward this brother and forgive his shortcomings and grant him gentle to those and may Allah Azza wa Jal make it easy for his family members. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says two things return back a person's family and his wealth. And the only one thing that will remain with us is our good and bad deeds. My dear brothers and sisters this is something to ponder over. Wallahi, this is something to ponder over. The Prophet of Allah is relating to us a very important lesson in life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not have to mention this hadith. But he mentioned this hadith. And imagine, this came out of the mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are only passing on the message. And he is telling us a very important lesson that the only thing that will remain with us will be our good and bad deeds. A'mal, good deeds. So Hatim al-Asam, he says after pondering over this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فَجَعَلْتُ حَسَنَاتِ مَحْبُوبِي فَإِذَا ذَهَبْتُ إِلَى الْقَبْرِ كَانَتْ مَعِي He says, I made the most beloved thing to me doing good deeds. So that when I go to the graveyard, my good deeds are with me. SubhanAllah. The gist of this khutbah, my dear brothers, the main point that I want to bring to our attention, firstly to myself and my noble audience, is make your good deeds the most beloved thing to you. After loving Allah and His Rasul وسلم, and loving our parents, our good deeds must be the most beloved thing to us. Because if we make our good deeds 
the most beloved thing to us. Insha'Allah, our good deeds will be with us in our cover. They will be with us in our cover. And this is something to ponder about, my dear brothers and sisters. How much good deeds do we perform every day? Really? And like a smart businessman, what does he do? He invests his money in a place where he can receive a good profit. This is the trend. Right? I invest money with this company because I know the return is good. However, what about our good deeds? What about the most important bank account? The most important bank account. And this bank account will determine whether we attain success or destruction. This is the most important account we must fill every day. And like a wise businessman, he goes out of his way, he does his homework and then he invests. Likewise, my dear brothers, we must look for golden opportunity in our deen. And there are so many jewels Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has brought to our attention. And if we take advantage of these jewels, inshallah we will see our bank account will increase to such a degree that our mind cannot even fathom. And what's the good news, my dear brothers? Doing business, investing is very tough. It is very tough. It's a gamble. It's a risk. But wallahi, when we invest with Allah, when we do good deeds, and when we extract these pearls from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these jewels, it is so simple. But the reward is absolutely amazing. It is absolutely amazing. A little bit of effort only. And the reward is great. So inshallah I'm going to speak about some of the ways of how we can increase our good deeds. Some of the hadith and some of the, like they say, the little, the pathways of how to attain a lot. Like a businessman, he wants to put a little to attain a lot. Let us dwell into the history of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and try our best to also find these pearls and be part of these pearls and take hold of these pearls so that we can invest a little bit of time and take maximum benefit and reward from Allah wa ta'ala. The first jewel that I advise you all to take advantage of and this hadith comes in Muslim where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day he leaves his house for Salat al-Fajr. And he took a bit of time. And his respected wife, she was sitting in one position. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned after four hours, how many hours? Four hours. He sees his wife in the same position. In the same position. So he says to his wife, you know, what are you doing? From the time I left and to this very moment I returned after such a long time and you are still here. You are still here, subhanAllah, doing your morning adhkar and your du'as. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught his wife a jewel. He says, if you recite the following dua, and don't worry, I've made copies for all of you. Whoever recites the following dua in the morning, all of what you have recited for the four hours, this one dua overpowers all of that. This one dua which comes in Sahih Muslim, from the time I left in the morning until this very moment, Four hours, if you recite this dua, this dua is much more powerful than everything that you have recited. <coughs> and what is the dua? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then informed his pious wife to recite the following dua. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, adada khalqi, wa rida nafsi, wa zinata arshi, wa midada kalimati. Glory is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All praise be to Him by the multitude of His creation. SubhanAllah. By the multitude of His creation. 
subhanallah. Look at the wording of Rasulullah sallallahu By his pleasure, by the weight of his throne, subhanallah. By the weight of his throne, there is nothing much more heavier than the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, look at this dua. It's such a small dua. And by the extent of his words. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to his wife, recite this dua three times in the morning. That's it. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, adada khalqi, wa ridha nafsi, wa zilata arshi, wa midada kalima. So inshallah, I have this dua here. I've made 250 copies. And it's free. It's free. Just make dua for me. So my dear brothers, inshallah, no one should leave the masjid without taking a copy of this, inshallah. And recite it every day. Because look at the reward equivalent to the creation on this on this on this dunya. Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us another supplication, and this is the final hadith of Bukhari. This is the last hadith of Bukhari. Every alim that completes his sharia, this is the final hadith that he recites. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course of it, Bukhari is the most authentic book after the Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kalimatan, they are two phrases. Habibatan ila rahman, they are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thaqilatani fil mizan, they are very heavy on the scale. What scale are we talking about? Not the scale by the fruit and veggie market, no. The scale on judgment day. The scale that will determine whether we are going to Jannah or Jahannam. This scale, it is so heavy. But the good news, as we mentioned, we want to be the smart businessman today. Khafifatani ala nisan, it is very light on the tongue. Very simple. So they are loved by Allah, these two phrases. They are loved by Allah. They are heavy on the scale on judgment day. Meaning it will increase our good deeds. They are loved by Allah. What are they? <laughs> Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah wa Very simple. How can we let a day go by? Huh? How can we let a day go by without reciting these two phrases? Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah al this is the second jewel. I repeat, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al -Azim. Now imagine with the first dua and the second dua, how much hasanat will we receive? La ilaha illallah. Not only are you a good businessman at your work or with your job, but at the same time you are increasing your bank account with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. And this account will be of great help to you and I in our cover and when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third jewel, and I will end up with this last jewel. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day he delivered the khutbah on Friday and then he leaves the masjid. And there was a sahabi by the name of Abu Umama. He was standing by the gate of the masjid. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Why are you standing here? He says, Oh Messenger of Allah. He says, You have commanded us, Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu, Ida nudhiya lis salatu min yawm al-jumu'a, Fasa'u ila dhikrillah wa darul bayyat. That all people of Iman, When the call for prayer comes, Meaning for salat al-jumu'a, Leave your trade and hasten to the remembrance of Allah. And thereafter you mentioned to us that فَإِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ That when the salah has come to an end, go into the earth. Meaning, وَبَتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ Go and seek your rizq. وَبَتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ But while you are seeking your rizq, وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Remember Allah in abundance, that in order that we be amongst the successful ones. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at this point, after Salat al-Jumu'ah, he taught the Sahabi a very powerful dua. 
A very simple dua also, because all the duas that I am sharing with you today, they are very simple. But they are worth much more than everything that we see in this dunya. More than our houses, more than our cars. Rasulullah says, a person who goes out in the morning to the workplace, or he goes to the marketplace. So if you drive your car, you go to your surgery, or you go to your law firm, or you go to whatever job you have, and you recite the following dua. Very simple dua. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadeer. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the person who recites this dua, one million good deeds. One million good deeds. And not only that, wa maha alfa alfa sayyi'an. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and on top of that we will erase one million minuses. Very simple dua. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to recite these simple du'as. May Allah azza wa jal reward us and increase our bank account in akhirah. Make it heavier than our left hand side. There are many many more things I would like to share but inshallah we will continue next week with more jewels that we can extract from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And once again inshallah the first dua, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, عدد خلقي ورضا نفسي وزينة عرشي ومداد كلماتي. Second dua, Subhanallah, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah العظيم. Third dua, لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك ولا الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. إن شاء الله by reciting these duas, we will meet Allah Subhanahu wa Taala as true billionaires. With a'mal salihah. So inshallah, my dear respected brothers, may Allah Azza wa Jal grant us the tawfiq to be in His remembrance, to make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to recite the du'as, supplications of our beloved Nabi Kari Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us the tawfiq, inshallah.